Okay, uh, what I want to talk about today is social commentary art. Uh, that is not politically one-sided or the other, but a commentary on what's happening. And in my case, it's uh, we're going to talk about the war in the Ukraine and how my own prejudice may come out, but also because it's such a horrible uh, existence of a, a, and a, a, of, a, of war, and the the, uh, the art of uh, the political is not as 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 major as the art of a commentary. So I'm going to talk more about commentary than about a political statement. Even though the work, my, uh, the work itself will tell the story of my feelings and artistically what I'm looking for. And we'll look at, we'll, we're going to see, the, the, as I always do, I work in a series and we'll see part of the series later. But first I want to share with you something that is political and is, once, is definitely one-sided. And it was from the 1970s. Romo for Governor, Peace and Freedom Party, back in the days of the Vietnam War and the, the anti-war movement, and that's the Salines Valley, and that's the old Spreckles Sugar Plant, and this is Romo, the gentleman that was running for governor, and uh, this is one of the masks that I had, and then the, all around it, but that's, I used to put a lot of uh, figurative things in my letters. The important thing for me was that this was originally a linoleum block because we only figured that we'd maybe get 10 or 12 people to put this poster up. And then we made it, we, we, uh, we decided to go and get it lith uh, co uh, co commercially lithographed and we made a bunch of them. They got, they got out, they got around, but uh, obviously, I mean, we knew he wasn't gonna become governor, but we wanted the statement to be made that e either one, Either, either party was not going to work out. That the Peace and Freedom Party, which died relatively quickly, is the, was what this was about. Black and white is very important to, to political commentary, the social commentary, because it get, has an impact that you just don't get when it's with, with the colors. We can, we can look at the uh, uh, Great artists of uh, the 20th century, like Ben Sean, and, and uh, making political commentary, but also making artwork that is a serious commentary, but serious in the sensibilities of the design and the concept uh, leads to it. So what I wanted to do with this one was to get the design and concept and the message. So black and white. It could be there's no room for color in this. It's a and it's it's a political statement, but it's also I think a design statement. Up here, I I've been using for this new series the Canson watercolor paper. And the one of the things that's important about the Canson watercolor paper is that it's 140 pound like a regular watercolor, or they have them in 300 pound. That is that is different than when I'm using my arches down here, and that's a 300 pound arches, so it stands up on its own. And that's when I do a watercolor watercolor. This is not meant for for I don't use this for watercolor. I use it for mixed media. And I have these in pads in different sizes. But the important thing is that I can build it up and tear it up and do things with it. But I wanted, in this particular case, I wanted a smoother feeling. And we'll see those when we look at the ones that are uh, going to show up on the, the viewing. I put the uh, paper up here using the artist tape.
on the corners and, and the roll on the back, at the top and the bottom. And I also use sometimes this, the little dots. that's put on the corner. But I've decided for this, I just wanted to use the, uh, the, the whiteness of the artist in the plane and just keep the whiteness and the whiteness of the paper as it is continuous in this series where it's white in the negative space and color in the positive space and the black being a linear space. So I'll just, I start with a, a jet black pencil. Which is the blackest black that you could get in the graphite lead. It's important because it's fat and I, and I hold it better then I hold just a regular pencil. I have to start the idea with the idea of being in my arms. My arms flows to my hands and my head is always going towards the idea and the I feel like the arms are flowing down my arms through the pencil and onto the paper. What the what what may be called or would be called in the in the in the French surrealist movement, uh, automation or automatic writing, like automatic writing, or automatic drawing. So I may start with a general shape and work my way into the shape and then occasionally go outside of the shape. I'm thinking of these two rockets that blew up the, sh the Moskva ship uh, the other day in, uh, in the Ukraine. And the, 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 the ship that was the head of the fleet, it was the big deal. It was their major ship in the Black Sea. But I'm making it into a person as, as opposed to uh, making it into just some rockets. And I'm 
taking the idea that a possibility here might just become a development of an idea two different eyes, two different ways of seeing, two ways of seeing Expanding out the ideas, don't know where this is going, but as I'm talking, I'm going to put down whatever comes to my head. It's kind of a more female feeling to it and also making it have other possibilities. But that, that it was theirs, it was their missiles that sunk the ship. I, I, I love multiple aspects. I love profiles with front views. That's very popular to make a shape for me that I feel I would not only relate to, but it tells a story of, of many ideas of many people. And yet it's the one story of the whole of that shape. It tells the, 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 all of the people of the Ukraine sinking the ship, the Moskva, Moscow is the, the, the actual, in, that's in Russian, it's Moskva. We may take the pattern out, we may leave that in, don't know yet. Right now it's looking like I'm gonna take it out because it's just not uh, holding up for me. Over here I have my different variations of black. 
ink and this is the, the big speedball bottle that's called the, 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 the a black cat or super black or has all these different essentially what it is is the, is India ink and it used to be you get them in uh, Higgins and you get it in the uh, Pelican but now uh, the Pelican was bought by Speedball I may be corrected on that but anyway it's this it's the, the making of and I have a big jug of it always because that's how I use it Use a watercolor brush that's uh, very, very soft, very smooth, and I get it wet. I get down, and I go into my basic black, which is this black here, and then I can add to it. There went that part. holds a lot of ink as it does it holds a lot of water in watercolor but it's small enough where I can make a line I will go back into that black, but I, it gives me a different ground than a white. And that black is going to be an important part of that side of the, of the picture. And an important part of the commentary. Balance, maybe balancing off that heavy dark on the other side. Again, there'll be color going in and out of that black. So for right now, I'm just using this one brush.
the piece will always keep changing. In other words, what I start with, I, I don't end with, unless it's just a few lines. But in this case, I have more to talk about. So it'll keep changing and how I want to say it. work gets more and more abstract and I know the lines that it's underneath it. That's important that I keep this overall shape and the simplicity guiding it all the time. On this side, I have my black ink wash. Over there, I have the more color. And sometimes I, I mix it up because I forget which way I'm going in the middle. But it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't matter. But in this case, when I want this, uh, to get the black a little bit whiter, A small acrylic brush, which I use 
to make thinner lines. Okay, I'm gonna let this dry. Let it set up as I, right now I'm looking at it from the standpoint of what's the black and how much of the black will I eliminate. Again, I'm working, I'm working as a, a lot of intuition and very little planning on this one. And as I keep working it, the intuition will play on my mind, but I also will be designing it as I go along. Okay, I'm going to stop at this point. When we think of uh, social commentary art, we think of Goya first. The master of, of it was Goya during the Napoleonic Wars in Spain. And before that, he was the court painter. So he knew how to do the, the fancy the, the detail work for the king. But all the time he was making fun of the king because the king was kind of a joke. And, uh, but it was very important for, for Goya to keep expressing himself. And as he went deaf, his paintings got more and more electrified, exciting, and, and, and caught up in the wars that were going on and the horrors that were going on. It's important to understand, to understand Goya is to understand the master of social commentary and social commentary of the times he was living. The other part is that he did, a, he, he, he explored uh, the printmaking and the graphics of his day, the lithography, which had, which had just come into being, and the uh, the etchings and the aquatints, aquatint being the heavy resin powder on an etching that uh, will create great different variations of grays. He was a master of, of, of variations. He studied uh, a lot of various artists' etchings, but he in the end, he came up with his own uh, and his own way of working the into very various variations of the grays. You didn't have color printing yet, so uh, but what he but he had some of the most beautiful grays that uh, occupy for me. They are a color unto themselves. So when we're talking about social commentary art, uh, Goya is number one for me and I think for most artists. We don't want to get into the, uh, 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 the, the kind of who's better than not, not better than who, but it just what I, what I respond to. What, what do I personally like and how important is it to me what is said and what is done and what is the composition about? I'm not, I'm not here to, to, uh, to promote uh, any, any artist or even myself, but I just want people to learn that you have your own way of thinking, your own feelings and all that must be in, and must be part of your work. It's an important part of your work because it is you. And we can go and do all kinds of things in art because we have all the different materials and different methods now and all kinds of different ways of working. But it has to be you in the end. And that's what's important to me. As it's drying, I'm also seeing that uh, when I went back over some blacks, I could see that I'm, get, I'm getting to see the rhythm inside the blacks. Rhythm is a very important part of my art. And it, it, tells, it tells a lot of the story when I'm talking about the rhythm. The rhythm and the story are one. The outside shape is, is as we'll see in the, in the finished works, that that's what, that's what we're talking about in the end. That the impact having the white negative space and the black positive space 
or underneath the colors, bringing out a different kind of uh, color than the one that's just on white paper. All right, well, uh, when, I'm, when I'm working with this in color, I, I like to use gouache. This is Turner, the Japanese gouache, acrylic gouache. I like the acrylic gouache because it's protected. It doesn't get scraped. Uh, it doesn't scrape uh, like the uh, a regular gouache could get scraped. But I want it because it's if it's for if I sometime I want to print something I don't want a shiny surface on it. Then these are uh, this is a very good set and the price is is, is very fair on it. And I also use the golden liquid acrylics, which are also more matte than a regular acrylic, and. I will also use uh, uh, as, uh, the Utrecht uh, ones, but the Golden makes this set as a kind of an introduction set, and it's a good combination to to uh, have because I uh, I'm I, and I, and the other thing that's important is that I have this set and this set. I have a quite a range. The other thing I may use is some metallics once in a while. And this is a very good silver that I like very much. And then if I want a, a muted gray kind of a steel um, with mica in it, This is made by Golden, and it's very high quality. Both of them are very high quality, but the, anything with the Golden on it is, is, is very high quality. The other is a gold. This is a iridescent gold, and it's a gold fine. In other words, it's ground very fine. Okay, so I'm looking at this, and I've been looking at this for quite a while. And what I'm going to do is I want these parts to be the two where the rockets came out to sink the ship. We were talking about the Moskva, the famous Russian ship that was the pride of the Russian Navy. And uh, there it was, coming in to, to uh, running the, the Black Sea and all that, and all that stuff into it. And, uh, the, uh, when that when I came into the port or near the port at uh, the uh, two of the uh, sailors from the from the, the Ukrainian Navy said no nah, we'll blow it up and they did <laughs> they shot it with the two rockets from their own that they made called Neptune rockets and there it was and then it was being towed away and it sunk as it was being towed. So anyway, we're gonna look at, for what I'm looking at in terms of brushes, this little square top brush. Good for small areas, but also good for covering evenly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take this
Now this doesn't mean that this is where it's going to be sitting on top. Colors can go into this silver because it's not a heavy, it's not a heavy body acrylic that it won't take over when it goes on top of it. The important thing is that I'm, 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 I'm drawing with the silver. This is a red that can be used as I would call a middle red. And it still has a touch of the orange in it, but not too far. When I'm putting it on my palette, my palettes in these small little areas, because what I'm doing with these is using them primarily as the as they are out of the tube. Not all the time, but sometime. It's very important that I I will get the this brush wet and it's very stiff, so I'm going to break it up a little bit. And I'm going to put the old Soviet star, which is still used by the Russian army, just down there. So we'll start with that gives it that's going to be the red that may kick it off in an area. up over the black going to play these reds against each other and and they may change in the process of the painting not so not as dark as red but that red on the when it hits the black gets it darker and, and all the colors will get darker if they're with the black underneath it the black remember is the India ink and the India ink is really tells the story and decides the shape and all because we're talking about this kind of a kind of a, a, a war that's an eye as a face as a big head because I continue to do this series in terms of big heads. Okay, now I'm going to come in. I'm going to come in with the black from the India ink side in here, which has been sitting up so it gets thicker. Okay, why do I want it thicker? 
because I want it to cover better. But I'm going to go into the silver one gray when I go over it. And then up here, I'll neutralize it. And you see how it, that actually is very warm compared to when it sits on the silver. These little spots here are very important part of the piece. Okay, now to the water that's for the ink. There's, there again is that, the repetition of that, that warm gray, or almost as neutral. because this is coming from this is coming from the Ukrainian side not from the Russian side but the ship gets that so that they we know where where they're aiming for the star what that star does is gives me a red to go down that way Keeping the yellow and green and letting the ink come through. So I have this brush very wet so that the, the gouache will be more transparent. The yellow will be more transparent, giving it another dimension. And that's, again, for the, for the uh, Ukrainian flag colors.
is some fluid coat. I guess it could be used in an airbrush. And I'm adding it to the to the red. Gives it a little, it'll change it slightly, but not too much. And as I keep mixing it, I can get a, a different color. Okay, now I go back into this red with this, and you can see the difference. over the silver it'll start the more vibration will be happening as it dries and again it's on thin it's important that these are always on that they're on thin now I'm going to go in back into the green Gives me a little more brown to the, the, the earth color more when I go into the green, the complementary of the violet. Going on top, but I'm setting, I'm setting up a dimension and then there's a face below that. This is like a cerulean blue, a little more generic, but this is in the gouache. Again, I don't want it, I don't want it thick. I want this, I hope, we want things to happen here. These will be under, these are under colors that be where the blue will come through. So that's that's more quiet than it would than it's going to be. But right now I'm I'm, I'm under I'm putting under colors on under paint. brown again that kind of when, when I'm taking the complementaries and setting this this up, up, these eyes up and I want to use that back here
different yellow. And so I'm going to take the from the fluid. Sometimes they're not too fluid. I'm gonna add it to that green there and put some for itself over there. See that yellow? It has almost a generic yellow feeling to it. Okay, so I'm gonna lighten up that that bright green just a little bit. transition from the yellow to the yellow green to the silver to the silver into the yellow so the, all the, the, the metallic silver is there still but now it's almost all gone I'm darkening brown now you can see how it just slightly darkens down there in the blue in that dark blue. Now we're in that that yellow, and I'm going to giving it a slight greenish tint. over the black starts another dimension and that's what I'm always looking for is eventually the colors will have a dimension unto themselves sending you back to the red down there and letting this silver and the silver there stay but with some with some red on top the darker red now there's a light red back there to make the eye move over there I want the eye to keep moving around this shape now I'm going to take into into this yellow, the more generic yellow, I'm going to add the, the more the generic, kind of the generic red. Now the, 
violet comes back. This all requires how it dries. It's not gonna dry the same as it is when it's sitting wet. People make the mistake of thinking that when it's gonna look like what it looks like when they first put it down. That's not what happens. And what happens is that we're using gouache, which is designed to go mad. It's, it's not looking together yet. Right now it's in the middle zone. The hardest part of a painting for me is in the middle. In the middle of the painting, it, it, it's got a, it, it, it gives me a direction, but I'm not satisfied with it. What I'm looking at is I want the whole thing not to be quite as bright because it's not a, I want something that tells, tells the story, but doesn't tell the story that's abstract, but it's not totally abstract. I want all these things to happen at the same time. So it's a good way to go nuts. You want to go nuts, do that. Otherwise, you might say, hey, you know, this is what's happening. Okay, because, because all this has acrylic in it somewhere, I mean, how are you going to make a gouache be, have, a, have a tough surface? You, make, you gotta put acrylic medium in it. And that's what, the, that's what the Koreans and the Japanese and the, the Asian ones were doing at first and then the, uh, uh, Windsor Newton and all the European companies were doing it. And of course, Golden. But in Golden's case, they found that the, the more fluid, more fluid colors work better for, for this kind of, this kind of uh, what we're talking about, this kind of uh, dead, dead like, like gouache, but, but, but fluid like acrylic, and that it would hold the color in the fluidity, wouldn't get lost. Now, what I'm talking about is getting lost is that many colors eat other colors. We in, uh, but when you're talking about fluidity, it could be just the amount of pigment that's going to get eaten by something that has more pigment in it. It's important to understand that because when you're, when you're working on, on a project like this, a painting, you're really looking at it as this outside shape has to stay until I don't, until I change it. Okay, I'm gonna wait a few minutes and then I'm gonna come in with my uh, Spanish pearl medium, Vallejo. Got it, yeah. Okay. Now the Vallejo has to have his own. It's a pearlescent medium. You don't want any water in your medium. It'll cloud it. What you want it to do is to do what it does, what it's made to do. And it's not made to cloud it, but what I'm looking for is to make, to, to tone things down and pull the colors up. That sounds like a contradiction in terms, but oh, this whole thing is gonna be a contradiction when I'm finished with it. Okay, this brush uh, was a, made popular by a woman, uh, and I can't remember her name, but it was as popular with the uh, Daniel Smith Company, and it's a long hair version of what, what house painters, but it's it's softer than the than the cheap bristles from that. But we but I, what what I want is to have some texture, but have it softer, soft but texture. 
this brush does it pretty good. I'm gonna take it out, keep very small amount on it, and we'll come in. Now this will this will dry clearer, not clear, but clearer. Important to get this brush very dry, very wet, and keep it wet. I'm gonna take this palette knife. A Bob Ross palette knife. By the way, he made some good brushes. I never liked his paintings, but he made good brushes and he made good palette knives. And we're going to come in. So just taking a little bit off to let it show up more. It's not making a, I'm not trying to make a, a texture with the knife. I'm scraping it back to, to get the, the, under, the underpainting going. Taking this large watercolor brush, which has a mixture of hair and animal hair and uh, plastic, mostly plastic color. I'm going to come in. Go around. Come up to that yellow. With the green slightly coming in there. Give me a shadow behind there. So it gives that more dimension. And it's this. Begins to come out more. kind of because these aren't I don't ever think of them being exact and it's a it's warmer it has a cerulean warmth to it but 
it's yeah so I think it's much too light for an ultramarine but that's yeah. Yeah. now I'm going back over Okay, now I've blotted a little too much. So on this side, so I want to come in. slightly. I can see where this is. I'm going to thicken this here. I don't get another dimension in that. now it looks like it should look this way and maybe I'll turn it that way but right now I'm just not now that star is the the star is sticking out too much I just want that to be star goes back down just a little back okay I'm gonna take a few minutes here to look at it and see where I am at that just keeps wanting to be this way it's telling me to be this way if I don't listen to the painting the painting won't work and right now it's not working important to understand when it's not working don't fight it you don't have to agree with it but don't fight it I think that was a mistake where that the pearlescence is coming up more but that's what I'm going to have to look at now Put a silver. A silver, silver. Remember that the pearlescent isn't dry yet.
it in the ink that uh, I don't know it got voted number one by somebody it says on the label so anyway whatever it's that's about I don't know but I'm gonna put it in my straight out of the bottle is this in the ink and the other in the inks are for texture that I have in those other things. I add water to them and I get a different texture out of the, the bowl with the three uh, big fillings there. It's the fan brush. And the fan brush is, 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 a, is a, what they call token, token, uh, hair it's a plastic hair that's very springy So now I'm going back to almost, I'm in, going to be looking inside a cannon or a rocket shooter. step back from it now and I can see how as, as you can tell I keep changing it because my mind keeps changing it and the, the pick the paintings telling me that it doesn't like where it's at that I'm going to change it and see where it's going and it's, it was going to tell me that that center part was not working and making this kind of a like, almost like a tornado, but it's going to be inside, inside the cannon, and it may change again. It may change three or four times before I get something that I like or the painting likes. But something is happening now in there that's different. Bingo. It became much more transparent, and that's when I decided it was, it was done. One, one thing about working that we've talked about before is listening to it. Having that verbal, that visual dialogue with the painting. But sometimes, as in this case, we didn't know when it was going to, come, when it was going to tell me. It had to tell me when it got rid of the acrylic medium cleared into, into the transparent. That's the story of this inner part here, where the, the cannon, and that inner part of the colors going around and having the impact, that single impact of the outside shape and the more mysterious parts coming inside the cannon. The mysteries in the two rockets coming out of there, but we don't see the rockets, we only see inside and we see these two the two cannons shooting the rockets as as we come along here the transition the color transition comes in a in the pro in the pearlescence 
and this the Spanish medium eventually cleared itself up because that was part of the problem it was clouding but and now it cleared itself up and, be, and did what it's supposed to do. The blue along here is that very matte blue, is that very matte blue from the gouache because that's the beauty of gouache. It, it's poster-like. And that gives us a whole total different feeling than this part in here, which is very layered. So. This drawing with this blue is an important accent against the rocket. Putting this in down through here, this warm gray right in this section here also gave the, the black of the ship more, much more dimension. And then it gets lighter around up here so that it goes up here is lighter than down here. And that, that's making the, the black move a little bit. Very slightly moving, but moving. This is possibly a combination of the Ukraine colors and perhaps a, a a, a Russian soldier in the, with the Ukraine. We don't know. I don't know what that was about, except I needed that to happen for this. If I do this, that pops up. If I take that off, it balances. If I'm, if I'm going along and we have always the same, then all of a sudden we have this. The element of the surprise element is in here. The red star, the ruby lips, and this red over here. I'm moving the eye across this. It can, makes the eye go across the subject. And this is really the subject in here. We're also looking at this in terms of that, the importance that we talked about yesterday of the outside shape and that being very clear that that's the ship, the blackness of the ship, but it's that outside shape against the white that also helps tell the story of a visual impact that is singular, but not singular when you get into here. When you get to the center, it stops being singular. And so when we're talking about singular visualizations, we're talking about this sort of thing right here. And when we get into here, it's multiple visualizations. When we get to that point, when we wanted to go way back, like inside of a cannon, you go back but we pulled both sides into this United Center because it took both cannons, both rockets to sink the ship. Keep looking and studying what's, what's happening is, the, is half the battle. And again, not to assume we know what it's gonna be like, We can have things that are finished and we don't know they're finished, or we can have things that are unfinished and we think they're finished. But the one thing we, we have to do is allow it, the material, to do its thing. And by this morning, the material did its thing. It's very important in this series that I tell a story that's not always the same story, not the same cast of characters, but are each in their own way, their own painting. 
and their own set of, set of characters. Why is that white? Because I wanted the white to be along here. Just that moment, just that little bit there is the only time I go back to the white, the white that's here. Now, when I cover this, the nose becomes very different and the white pops forward a little bit. Now, it's holding that white from coming forward. When, when I have those, uh, uh, the, the circle here with the, with the face in it or the mask face in it, and some of the black comes over it, it just ties it down and that goes down below the black. So this could be below part of the ship. The important thing is not to tell the story so obvious for me. I don't want it to be obvious until you look in here. When you look in here, I want you to go inside that section of the painting. This is the, this is, goes around the outside of the painting and this side of it tells the, tells the story of the nose and the eye, all that, but it's telling the story of the outside, the faces, and then into the black of the ship. It's a, because we were um, dealing in the visual, I want to make the visual a story unto itself. Everything that happens in here happens, has a job to do. But what the job is, we only find out later. We can think we know what the job is and we can map things out and we can map it all out and and have it exact and all that, or we could go free form and do that. But in the end, they'll do, they'll do their job or they don't do their job. I do my job or I don't do my job. My job is to wait for that to happen. And this morning it happened.